Let me tell you some stories about my grandmas. My paternal grandma is fairly religious. If you've hung around my channel for a while, you're probably aware that I am not. She'll talk about blessings and God's plan, and when things get tough, she'll say things like, well, one thing I know is that the Lord never gives us more than he thinks we can handle. You know, cutesy grandma stuff. I'm not a believer in the Lord that she's talking about personally, but it doesn't bother me that her belief brings her comfort. My maternal grandma was more of a loose cannon. She put things bluntly, and her views on race and on culture were forever stuck in the 1950s. I really don't think she was trying to be racist, but the terms she would use and the way she would describe people of color were often colorful. So while I don't agree with my grandmas on these worldviews, the fact that they hold them doesn't bother me. And why doesn't it bother me? Because my grandmas, like all of us, are a product of their time. So while most of us give grandma a pass on her outdated worldviews, there is a growing number of us who don't apply that logic when grandma or grandpa is famous or influential, or is the namesake of something big or important, like a street or a monument, or, in today's example, a school. This week, after months of consideration, the Board of Trustees at Princeton University decided not to remove President Woodrow Wilson's name from its School of Public and International Affairs and from a residence hall despite protest and outrage that Wilson was a racist and a segregationist. <laughs> The irony there is that Woodrow Wilson actually did build that place. He was Princeton's 13th president, and he is credited, according to the school's trustee committee on the issue, with transforming an intellectually lethargic campus into a renowned institution of higher learning. That committee, I might add, is chaired by an African-American alumnus. I'm glad that sanity has prevailed at Princeton, but this case is one example in a growing trend I simply cannot understand. The insistence that we hold historical figures to modern standards of morals and ethics. Sure, Woodrow Wilson was a racist, and he was a segregationist. That is not a secret, that is not an unsupported claim, but there is a key asterisk on that fact. Racism and segregationism were common at that time. Wilson wasn't different, his views weren't radical, and as much as we like to think otherwise, if we were raised in that culture, in that time, odds are our views would probably be the same. And it need not even be a product of culture, it might just be a product of circumstance. Let's consider an example from a few videos back. Christopher Columbus was literally a genocidal pimp who couldn't read a map, and now six-year-old sings songs about him in school. Put yourself in the role of Christopher Columbus. Let's say you set sail into an ocean and you have no certain idea of what's on the other side of it. When you arrive on land, there's a mysterious group of people who look and act completely different from you. These people, at that time, are the equivalent of extraterrestrials today. Would your priority in that scenario be cultural inclusivity or survival? Perhaps there's a debate there about restraint with force, but can you really blame the guy who shoots first and asks questions later when dealing with an unknown threat to his life? If you protesters want to put historical figures into modern context to make them look ridiculous, it's only fair that we get to do the reverse to you. Okay, sit-in protesters, let's swap out that administrative hall for some foxholes. Trade those laptops and books for some time Thompsons, and your hipster friend is now missing a leg from taking mortar fire right in front of you. Makes your problems look pretty silly, right? Even if we grant these protesters demands and the idea that we should erase certain historical figures who were known thought criminals, what's the end? Do we rename Washington, D.C., Columbus, Ohio, Jackson, Mississippi? All of these places have problematic namesakes because all of these places have human namesakes. People people of significant contribution, but people of significant flaw. Contribution like your grandma's nurture, but flaw like her outdated worldviews. Contribution we celebrate, but flaw we understand. Celebrating the contribution does not endorse the flaw, the flaw does not negate the contribution, and we understand both in the context of the time in which they occurred. So if, like me, you don't blame your grandma for holding the prevailing worldviews of her time, why would you blame a historical figure like Wilson? Wilson is nothing more than your grandma with a platform, your grandma with influence, your grandma 
with power. And besides, we need to hear the crazy things that Grandma says in order to understand how great we have it today. Only with respect to the past do we understand the value of today, so be careful about erasing history. You might erase some problems, but you also erase perspective. Without perspective, you become the type of person who complains about having elite educational opportunity at an Ivy League school. And well, nobody likes that type of person. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate the thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at skag underscore three. You're always welcome to come hang out and chat in my live stream. That is linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.